That's up to you. But we have to do it sometimes, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way we teach head covering, not as compulsory. People come to our breaking of bread meeting, we don't force them to partake. If you don't want to partake, welcome, don't partake. If you don't want to be baptized, we don't force anybody to be baptized. We don't force anyone to veil the head. We say you can come for the next 50 years till the Lord comes. You can come to our church service and sit every Sunday without veiling your head. We will never treat you like a second class citizen. We will never ask you to veil your head. No. But if you want to get up and pray in our church or if you want to get up and share a word in our church, we will insist, sister, that you veil your head because we have certain laws. And I tell people in many Indian homes and many other homes, when you walk into a home, the rule in that home is take off your shoes. Don't dirty the carpet, take off your shoes. Now, I don't have that rule in my house because we don't have carpets in our home. You're welcome to walk in with your shoes. But I don't say when I go to somebody else's home, hey, listen, I, don't, I wear shoes in my home, so why can't I wear it in your home? I follow the rule of that house. And that's not a great self-denial. And I ask sisters who go to churches where they veil their head, why are you so stubborn about not veiling your head in a church where um, everybody does that? Would you walk into your home, into a home where they remove their shoes and you say, no, in my home I don't remove my shoes, so I'm standing for my rights, I'll walk into your shoes, into this house with your shoes. You gotta be crazy. You are considerate about something in a person's house, but you're not considerate when you go to the house of the Lord, seek to follow what everybody else in that church does. That shows something of your character and your stubbornness and your arrogance and your pride. And I wanna to say to you in Jesus' name, there is some measure of God's grace that you will lose. And when you lose it, your children will also lose it. I'm not threatening you. I'm just trying to tell you God's word. It's my duty as a shepherd to warn the sheep. I can't force them. I remember when my other son, Sandeep, he started a church in California. It started in his home. And I was there in the beginning as well. And there were a number of sisters who, you know, from the locality, some very fine born-again sisters who did not veil their heads. And I remember Sandeep began to teach about veiling the head. And half the church walked out. Those sisters took their husbands and went out. And I told Sandeep, I think those sisters were right in that they did not veil their heads because they were the bosses in their house and they took their husbands and led them out of the church. So they were right in not veiling their heads. They were telling the truth. I'm, not, I'm the head in my house, so I don't veil my head. And they walked out and I told Sandeep, this is the best possible thing that happened here. It happened in this church. Half the church walked out at one time. I remember when it started. I said, this is the best possible thing that happened. We're now left with a small group which we can work with and establish scriptural standards and invite people to come in who want to obey, not who want to live according to their own whims and fancies and according to their traditions and their legalism and all that. So I said, let them go. You start with a small group and let's learn to teach all of God's word. I said, we practiced it for 40 years in India and not only in India, and over 70 churches worldwide and we've seen it works. If you honor God, God will honor you. And he has found that God honors him. So what I want to say is something we can learn from the example of Jesus.